you mean Nikki, is good. Now, if you're not new here, all 3% of you, you'd know that. But if you're not, you'd be like, oh, really, streamer man? Is it? Is it good, though? I mean, if you and Nikki was so good, where's you and Nikki, too? And then, bam, it happened. It happened 80 million more f times. There's a whole branch of RPG Maker games that are either inspired by or direct copies of Yume Nikki. And that's not to discredit these games in any way. Even the games that copy Yume Nikki's formula exactly still have their own unique art and worlds that give them meaning. While games inspired by it take the aspect of exploring wacky worlds to a whole nother level. For example, Minus One is what can be considered a Yume Nikki clone, but it has beautiful isometric scenes, actually isometric, not me being stupid this time, which is not all too common in RPG Maker games, since they're hard to control it. On the other side of the spectrum, Sarasus is loosely inspired by Yume Nikki and has its own gorgeous aesthetic, and only really carries the exploration and effect mechanics while changing up the rest of the formula. I've only played a small handful of games from the Yume Nikki fan games wiki, but the great thing about them is that they're about experiences. Regardless of how many you've played, you still obtained your own unique experiences from them, so it's not just about singular fan games, it's about Yume Nikki fan games as a whole. Each game is unique in its own way and they won't ever stop being made, so it's nearly impossible to put enough time into all of them. That being said, the games I played to get a good grasp of Yume Nikki fan games were Minus One, Cerasus, Ephemeral, I Cannot Drown, Yume Nikki 3D, and of course, Yume Tuki and Dot Flow, arguably some of the most popular Nikki fan games. From this list alone, you can see the wildly varying styles and aesthetics of each game, and you could even argue that some of these aren't fan games to begin with. But all of these games explore funky fresh dream worlds and have effects that you can use to f up the peaceful structure of everything because, damn it, mom, I want to play a scene now this dimension. Yume Nikki 3D is pretty neat because you can go through a couple of Yume Nikki areas in 3D, and it adds its own new areas. Some of these areas are cool and creepy, but the music doesn't fit the vibe at all. Regardless, I had a fun time with all the fan games I listed off, even with their downsides. I Cannot Drown It's gruesome and disgusting in the rightest way possible. It is one of the few visceral horror games I've played that actually got to me. Good job. Ceresus absolutely blew me away with its style, and was the best fan game I played, not including Yume Tuki. If you were to check out any of these games, I recommend Ceresus for its beautiful artwork and fun exploration. It changes quite a bit up because it's more loosely inspired than a direct fan game, but it's still very pleasant. But most of these fan games are short or not fully fleshed out. Where can you find a more complete experience? Look no further than Dot Flow and Yume Tuki. Dot Flow is a very well-known Nikki fan game, doing a lot of the things I am plagiarizing straight out of the Yume Nikki fan game's wiki, and implementing more horror elements than normal fan games. It is definitely influential in its genre. Unfortunately, I haven't sunk a lot of time into Dot Flow. Most of what I saw was eerie settings and lots of fun to explore worlds. Instead, a majority of my gameplay experience was spent on Yume Tuki. Yume Tuki takes the small world of Yume Nikki and expands on it tenfold. It is magnificent how large and interconnected this game is. To get a grasp of the massive scale, it only took me 3-5 to five hours to see pretty much everything Yume Nikki had to offer. While I've spent upwards of 20 hours in Yume Tuki, constantly seeing new areas and I've only gotten through a little over 30% as of version 0.112e. Without a guide, it would be impossible for me to find all the new areas and it would sap out all the fun of exploring them. The reason Yume Tuki is so big is because it has a long list of developers. From an outsider's perspective, this game has a very troubled development just from seeing how many devs come and go from the project. Despite everything through the years, the game remains. I personally like to stay on one version because some of my favorite worlds were removed in recent iterations, and another consequence of this large dev team is inconsistent themes and map design. I didn't play Yume Nikki for plot, but it was a nice underlayer to everything. While Yume Tuki has a lot of narrative you can speculate on, a lot of areas exist for the sake of existing rather than for underlying themes. This doesn't make the game bad, it still has some semblance of structure and a lot of endings, just sometimes the gameplay and narrative don't play to each other well. 
The exploration in Yume Tuki, however, is still spectacular. I'd argue that I had more fun here than in Yume Nikki just because of the wide variety in aesthetics and set pieces. What I love about Yume Tuki is how it drowns the player in depth, making you feel like a minuscule ant wandering through an industrial building, or even a human in a forest. I love how insignificantly small it makes you feel, and the sheer scope of everything leads you to constantly discover new and interesting locations. The music in Tuki is also on point. The game nails the original vibe of Yume Nikki and even expands on it in the aesthetic department. I absolutely love Yume Nikki's soundtrack, and Tuki feels like an extension of those songs with a larger focus on droning ambience and relaxing instrumentals. One of my personal favorite areas for the visual and audio vibe is the really small aquarium you find after an overgrown city. While the place is relaxing upon itself, the entire journey is filled with beautiful scenery and music. The cocktail lounge is another relaxing area that is consistently interesting despite there being nothing to do there. All the art for this area really sells a comfy bar vibe. There's a hidden area past the library called the Eyebell Archives that has an interesting fantasy vibe. It feels like a very alien castle of bookshelves teeming with knowledge. It is a bit visually monotone, but it does well to sell a magical library atmosphere. Plus it has an Eve reference at the end. Nice. Oh, this is nice. There are many examples of areas or music that I can bring up to showcase the different themes of Yume Tuki. Too much to list or talk about for a meaningful amount of time. The point is that Yumi Tuki can be whatever you want it to be. With all the different iterations and varying ambience, hell, the first and last updates of the game could vary so wildly from each other that they might as well be a different game altogether. All this speaks for the playability and appeal of Yumi Tuki. It is very much a fan sequel that takes all the aspects from Yumi Nikki and expands on them, so much so that it branches out into different sections. For instance, you have puzzle rooms. Then there are large areas with many branching paths. Alternatively, there are also linear levels that took you through atmospheric set pieces. And then you have your effect hunting that is expanded to wallpapers and other neat easter eggs that I didn't even know about when I first started playing. The many effects of Yumi Tuki add a lot of puzzle solving and interactability to the environments, and they almost always have some good use. There are even a couple of really eerie and creepy areas, with subtle and not so subtle horror elements. Despite this, the game's overall atmosphere is generally relaxing, with plenty of mellow areas and calm ambient tracks you could sleep to. I haven't really gotten close to finishing Yume Tuki, but that's okay because my perception of the game might be totally different from yours anyway. It's a game about feelings that leads the player to decide for themselves how it should be translated. It's surrounded by speculation and theory while none are wholly right or wrong, which is a beautiful way to convey art. <laughs>